Well, good morning to everybody. If you can see me, nice to see everybody. Or good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever it is there. Good morning, everybody. Oops, hold on here. Uh, I gotta mute that one. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm gonna be doing a little bit of interesting stuff here this morning, so kind of doing some more study um, on the issue of of uh, shutting off the comments and things so all right well so I guess what we'll do here is um, that's great to hear Chad you got rid of your video games you'll never regret it you'll never um, you know, I mean, there'll be times you'll have the temptation, I'll come back, you know, you'll think about it, but uh, you get the victory over it and some time in between when you used to play them and, you know, and giving them up and uh, you'll look back and think, boy, I sure wasted a lot of my time. So it's great to hear that you got victory over that. Um, so going pretty good. Real good. Um, it's good, John. Good to hear that you're away from video games as well. It's good. You know, it's it's neat to share that with the body of Christ, with with the with the brethren. You know that that there is you can get victory over sin. A lot of the easy believism crowd just makes it a thing of well, don't even worry about it. Don't even think about your sin. Just kind of. Go on and do it. And if you fall, well, okay, we're all sinners. We all just, you know, and they, they try to remove that guilt of sin. And you got to remember that God hates sin and that uh, God is not pleased when you sin. You have to remember that. And the purpose of your life as a Christian is to sanctify certain things out and get victory over those sins. So thank you to everybody out there for sharing the victory over sin. It's pretty neat. Yeah, we're going to be probably putting some uh, new bumper magnets on the Jeep. Our old ones, are they're getting kind of old. After a while, they're, when they're out there in the weather and everything, summer and winter, they start to kind of fall apart. And, um, so, all right. So, what we're going to do here, um, Well, I'll just I'll answer your question quick. We don't normally do questions till the end, but this is a, a quick one here. Brother Brian, what you mean by Jacob's trouble? Please enlighten in simple layman's terms. Thank you. There is no great tribulation, the great tribulation in the future. It's the seven year time period that's coming where God deals with the nation of Israel. Right now, God is saying Jews and Gentiles, you're all one in Christ. You know, the nation of Israel is there, but God's not dealing with them as a nation as he did in the Old Testament. The time, time of Jacob's trouble appears in Jeremiah 30, verse 7, chapter 30, verse 7. And it's dealing with this time period where God switches from dealing with all nations back to the nation of Israel. And he confirms the New Testament with the signs and wonders of the book of Revelation. So that's what that means. But no more, no further questions. We won't uh, get into that. Any more questions here? Because we have a very interesting study this morning. I'm really looking forward to preaching this. The uh, Lord really um, showed me a lot of things in this. So with that being said, hopefully everybody's, you know, doing okay with the emotional roller coaster that is the life of born-again Christians. <laughs> having bad days, having good days, having bad sleep, having good sleep, sickness and health, abased and abounding Hopefully everybody's just keeping your head above water. Sometimes that's all you can do. Um, but uh, just praying for the brethren out there. So, yes, get your King James Bibles ready. Okay. You don't have the money for a, a paper print one. Well, then you can use one online. But I do recommend um, <clears throat> I do recommend having a, a print one that you can have in your hands. Okay. It's kind of an important thing. So get your King James Bible out um so all right i'm gonna switch my thing here to 
um, prayer requests. So let's, all right, I'm going to have a brother give me a suggestion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, whoop, I messed that up, didn't I? Going to try to copy uh, prayer requests. And I'm going to put them in a document over here on this monitor. So okay. Anybody have any prayer requests? I hope this ah, man, I hope this thing doesn't grow too much more because I'm gonna have a hard time getting things done here. Um gonna be a little bit better, more efficient than uh trying to write it down quick. All right, a request please from an unsaved husband. Whoops. I don't know if this is quicker or not. <laughs> um, going back and forth here. Okay, I see yours. Low ten. Chris and Evie next. Um. Okay, I see yours. Uh, Jesus did it all. Okay, Bryant C, I see yours here. Keep me on prayer for my wife Susan. Her knee is really bothering her. Got it. Accountable KGV, I see yours there. All right, KJV Believer, I see yours. Okay. Yeah, I, I have yours, John Craig, and I have yours already. Um, let's try this. Okay, Spencer B. By C. Yours and KJV Believer. I'll get those two in here. Okay, John Gale, I see yours. I'll add it to my list over here. All 
right? Okay. I think we have a pretty good amount of them there. Um, okay. I'll pray just general there for people. Um, Okay, I'll just do it this way. All right. Okay. I guess we'll end the prayer request time here with AB Maritime Bible Believer, your request. And uh, then we'll get started here with our prayer, and then we'll get right into the message. Okay, so let's go up here. Um, Okay. All right, let's let's start out here with a word of, of prayer and then we'll get into the actual Bible study here. And um, okay, let's let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, that we can come together again here and have this opportunity to be on the internet and so many of us fellowshipping together from other countries and other states and, and everything else. And I thank you, Lord, that that you've shown all of us so much truth and that you're sanctifying sins and things out of our lives. And I pray today that we would be attentive to your word and uh, be blessed by the message that um, that you've given to me to preach. And I pray, Lord, that I would do a good job representing your word. And Lord, I do pray for Chad Stewart for his prayer request, um, that you would give him victory over soda and junk food addiction. Um, I know that that's not easy. Sugar is a very addictive drug, and I just pray, Lord, that you give him strength to get through this. For Katrina Wadi, that you'd please, um, uh, for her family in California with the fires very close, and um, that they would be able to sell their house and be able to move to a good location away from the danger area. Um, for John Cragen, that uh, you would help him with his struggles listening to secular worldly music, that you would just... Um, really give him victory over that for um, another one here for a prayer for travel safety from east to midwest for a pre-move visit they would be able to see if it's the right place to move to and, and uh, just uh, get a good feel for for things there and that you give them a chance to even witness uh, when they're doing that when they're traveling um, for kjv berean um, for her unsaved husband Lord, I just pray there's so much of that in the Bible-believing movement. Uh, so many people married uh, as lost people, and, and then they get saved, and then their person they're married to doesn't want to get saved. And, and I know that there's a lot of suffering because of that. And I just pray that you give her strength and uh, give her chances to win her husband with her chaste conversation, as your word says. Um, I pray for L. James. Um, he had a contact with a Muslim and has been frequently emailing him. Pray, I just pray, Lord, that uh, that you would guide his words and give him the right things to say. And that he would be able to remind um, this Muslim that it's about sin and Muhammad can't deliver them from their sins and, and from an eternity in hell. And I pray for Lotan Kirchman. Um, uh, victory there, Lord, that uh, this is his first Sunday away from his old church building. And I pray, Lord, for anybody else out there in church buildings that they would get out of them. They're just social clubs. They're not founded upon Scripture. For Chris and Evie, uh, the continued prayer for their uh, for his mother. That she's in Catholicism. And I praise, Lord, that she listened for the first time um, for, about what you had to say in the King James Bible in the book of Genesis. Lord, and I pray that she would have a desire for truth now that she would start to see more things going on in this, this world and know that she needs to be saved. Um, I pray for uh, in getting free of, of uh, Jezebel-type family members, people that are emotional and, and throw fits and things. Lord, I understand that one. For Brian C., um, prayer for his wife to be saved. I do pray for that, Lord. Um, accountable KGV brethren and sisters, please keep... Uh, prayer, uh, my, my wife Susan, her knee is really bothering her. Um, I do pray that you give him wisdom 
um, how to heal his wife's knee naturally, um, help him to just know what to do there. Um, for Ryan Griffiths, uh, that the Lord will provide. Um, money is, is getting tight for a lot of families, and I just pray that you would help him with um, making money there for his family. Um, for Darko KJV, um, prayer for a lost friend. He might get saved. He is, has cancer and he's dying. I pray that he would think about uh, eternity because he's going to be entering it before real long. I do pray for that. I pray for Zane Ray, um, the, for their family, the Roman Catholic parents and brothers and sisters. Uh, again, Lord, the, there's a lot of families involved in Catholicism and they're, they're so deceived. And I just pray that you would give them uh, this uh, Zane here um, chances to witness. Um, I pray for Dakota B um, for their parents. Um, I just pray for them that they would get saved as well. For KJV Believer, um, as they seek to go off grid and really need discernment, also more sanctification, they need to know what to do in these times. I pray for that, Lord, as well. Um, uh, for Brother Philip, um, that he get things out, that all of us would get things out of our lives that get in the way of fellowship with the brethren, and that we keep our eyes on Jesus every day. Uh, we get our eyes off of you sometimes, Lord. We forget our first love, and, and we look at the wickedness of this world, and we start to feel fear at what's going on. But I know you're in control of it all, Lord, and I pray you help all of us to remember that. For Omar Gonzalez, that he would get his CDL permit, um, that he would pass the test tomorrow, and um, because it's his ticket to get out of the city, Lord, I pray for that. Um, uh, for a brother here that he could find a modest woman that's his age that loves the Lord and would be willing to live a minimalist, minimalist lifestyle, Lord, I, I pray that you would please bring a godly young woman into his life. Um, for Mr. M777, that God would help him to find a job and that he would, uh, not only he would witness boldly, but all of us would be bold witnesses in these end times. Um, for David Martiro, Martiro, um I just pray, Lord, for victory for him over a certain sin that he's been struggling with. Um, I do pray for that. Give him strength for Spencer Beebe that... Um, for the safety of the brethren around the Gulf of Mexico coast with these two storms coming, two hurricanes, I guess it is, it's heading up there. Um, again, KGV believer, uh, Lord, I do pray that um, for her husband to find a different job and um, for the Lord to help him with some things too, some other struggles. Then I pray, Lord, for uh, Brother John Gale um, as he heads to North Carolina on Tuesday to visit kids and grandkids. Um, pray that prayer that he can spread the gospel um, as he enters into some really bad places there. Um, again, for Katrina Wadi, Lord, that uh, that they would have wisdom where the right place to move is. And uh, prayer for Brother Aaron Judge as he's suffering some really bad health issues. I know he really made a wreck of his life before he got saved and, and uh, struggled with drugs and, and things. And, uh, hearing the testimony of that young man, Lord, I know that that um, he's gone through a lot. And I just pray, Lord, that you would help him just to uh, recover from that as much as possible. But to, to the suffering pain he goes through, Lord, I pray that he would be a good witness to those around him that see him going through it. And I pray now, Lord, that we would just have a, a good time of fellowship, um, and but mostly studying your word, Lord, and that you would show us amazing things out of your word. And I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to see if I can hide the chat. I don't know if it will work just on YouTube or what. Um, so I want to see if I can hide the chat here. And then we're going to get into the study. I don't know if that works on StreamYard as well. Doesn't look like it works on StreamYard as well. <laughs> oh, Northern California. 
sorry, Brother John, not North Car Carolina. Oh, I was thinking that. Northern California. So, okay. Um, I don't know if the, the, I did hide the chat on, on YouTube, but I don't know if it's hidden. I can still see some of it here on the uh, stream yard. So, but let's get started here. Um, what we're going to do is, uh, are, are we allowed to chat during the study? Um, I'm going to just block the thing because I can still see some of your comments over here. So I guess it's not really much point there, but in me hiding the thing, but whatever. Um, you know, don't don't chat during, you know, when we're looking at the Bible. You need to be reading in the Bible. OK. Um, you know, I used to preach in church buildings and it used to always tick me off if people were sitting there talking. Uh, it's not very respectful and it's not about respecting me it's about respecting the word of god um so having said that i i would just ask you i can't stream yard i contacted them and they said no there's no way to shut off the comments you have to do it on youtube and it doesn't really shut off the comments so i can still see your your you know discussion stuff over there um so it's up to you i can't i can't shut down the comments i'm just going to take my little sword searcher thing and stick it over there and uh you know don't there's no need to be having conversations amongst yourself you know over there let's focus on the word of god so all right um so i'm not going to be looking at comments until the end of the study but uh we're going to talk today about conditional security versus eternal security now, whenever there's a condition, if there is something that's conditional security, um, that means that there are, it's something that you can lose. It's there's conditions on it. Now, a lot of people believe in conditional security right now. Well, that's an, that's an error. Okay. There, that's not there. We do have eternal security right now. But what happens is they'll go to the book of Hebrews specifically to, pr pr to prove conditional security, that you can lose your salvation. And they'll say, um, right there, it says this and that. And we're going to look at those verses today. And I'm going to say this right at the beginning. If you look at my notes here, I have conditional security versus eternal security, also known as Hebrews versus Ephesians. Okay. Hebrews. As we will see in this study, the book of Hebrews is written to Jews, Hebrews, in the time of Jacob's trouble. And in the time of Jacob's trouble, something shows up called the mark of the beast, whereby you take it and you get God's wrath. And I've talked about that for years and years. There is no eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble. If somebody t tries to teach that, they're lying. And chances are they're lost and they're going to be going into that time and they know that they'll have to take the mark to continue their life here on this earth. And, you know, going and working and everything else and having their bank account and buying groceries from the grocery store. So they want to try to teach that there's eternal security in that time period. And I'm going to prove to you today conclusively that, no, there's not eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble. Right now, in the body of Christ, this what could be called the church age. Yes, there is eternal security. And we will prove that as well. You can't lose your salvation because it's not your salvation. Right. It's how God saves you. He purchases you. So let's start out here. Um, Hebrews chapter two. We're going to be doing a lot of turning back and forth between Hebrews and uh, the book of Ephesians. So Hebrews chapter two. If you want, you can actually take something, anything, you know, a piece of paper, a little little notebook like this or something and, and stick it in the book of Hebrews. And then we'll flip to Ephesians and we'll come back to Hebrews whatever so you don't have to keep paging back and forth that's what i was doing during, while i was actually writing this study writing the notes for it but let's start out here in hebrews chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 okay hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them slip but what's that mean? Lest at any time we should let them slip? That sounds like a condition. That sounds like a warning. I mean, if you're saved, if you're born again, what does it matter if you let something slip in terms of your salvation? 
fellowship with the Lord, yeah, you have a problem. You shouldn't let things slip in terms of your walk with the Lord. Um, we're reading uh, the old John, or uh, yeah, I think it's John Bunyan, the thing of Pilgrim's Progress. We're reading right, that right now with Oliver, our son. And, you know, he slips off the path and he's getting away from the path and whatever else, but uh, still saved. But in the future, hmm, see, there's a condition there. Verse 2, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 2. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed? unto us by them that heard him god also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the holy ghost according to his own will all right it's talking about the the i believe in context it's talking about the jews that got saved early on in the, in the book of acts i believe what is what's going on there um but they're talking about neglecting so great salvation and you can say well that's just they heard it and they don't want it and, and things Oh, you're going to see as we go throughout the book of Hebrews that no, these people can actually make a profession of salvation and they can neglect it. They can walk away from it. Okay, you can get out of fellowship with the Lord right now and technically neglect your salvation and act don't act like a, a Christian anymore. But you're going to you're not going to lose your salvation. Things are different in this time period here. We will see that as we continue. But in the future. They walk away from their salvation, and uh, how do they do that? You say, well, I don't understand. Just get out of fellowship? No, they get, they get out of fellowship and take the mark of the beast. You know, Revelation 14, verses 9 through 11 says about if any man. Now, if, if it's just, well, that's just lost people, then it doesn't make any sense. You don't say if any man, if any lost man takes the mark. Well, obviously. No, it's if any man. The, the Bible is very simple, okay? There are certain things that are very deep and very, you know, you have to really read them and study and pray about the how it works out, but there are certain things that are just right there. And when the book of Revelation says about the mark of the beast and worshiping the beast in his image and that, that anybody that does that, you know, goes to hell, um, it's any man, saved or lost, okay? And you got to got to be careful in that time period there. We won't be there as Christians, as the body of Christ. We called out before that. But we see that here, Hebrews chapter 2. There's conditions there. Lest at any time we should let them slip. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? There are conditions to salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble. This is not written to a Christian today. Okay? We'll get back to that here in just a minute. But let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Take your piece of paper or whatever else and little book or I, I have two books over there. Um, but uh, take it and just set it there in the book of Hebrews. We'll be back to that here in just a little bit. But go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 through 9. And we'll see the difference here between conditional salvation and eternal security. Right? Eternal security is taught all through the book of Ephesians. You can be sure of your salvation, even if you mess up, even if you are falling back into sin and whatever else. You can be sure of your salvation right now, right? Because it's God's salvation. He saves you, right? Future time period, you have to work for it. There's faith. You can't see Jesus Christ during the time of Jacob's trouble, but you're seeing some events happening on the earth that are clearly written in the book of Revelation. People that would go into that time period, I'm saying. So there is there's faith there, but there is some sight and it will require the works of staying away from taking the mark of the beast. All right. Very important. But Ephesians chapter one, beginning in verse three. Blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ in Christ. OK, now who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ? Unless you'd or lest you or how you know, if you don't neglect it. no it's just it's an absolute statement boom you've been blessed that's the way it is in heavenly places done finished there's no well unless like you'll see in the book of hebrews 
It's just absolute statement after absolute statement all through the book of Ephesians. You're sealed. You're, you're purchased. You're this. You're that. It's done. It's over. Hebrews? Nope. If you fall away and if you, lest you fall or unless you remain, or, we'll see that. Verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Stop there. A teaching of John Calvin, the pagan Catholic philosopher that he was, he taught that uh, you were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world, predestinated. Well, then why would you need to get saved? No, that's, that's stupid. It's just saying that, you know, see, Calvinism teaches that you, if you're one of the elect, then you are in him, chosen in him before you were even created. And so, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Why would Jesus have had to come and die on the cross if he already chose the people that got saved? No, it's just simply saying this salvation here is there for people that are in him. But you have to be in him for these promises to be given to you. You see, you have to come to the Lord as a broken sinner and ask him to save you. And then the Lord will purchase you. He'll look and he'll say, OK, yeah, this person's real. They're they're honest. They're not self-righteous. Just saying the words or even you get atheists that mock, like, mockingly pray a prayer of salvation, whatever else. They don't believe it. You know, there's there's no belief there. They're just mocking. So. The Lord has to look at, at each individual case and say, okay, this person has come to me. They genuinely, genuinely want salvation. I'll save them. He purchases us. We don't make our decision for Jesus Christ and intellectually in the mind up here. And I didn't have to call on the Lord or whatever else. And No, that's not salvation. All right. God has to save you. And he saves you when you come to him in a broken, contrite spirit. You believe the gospel and you put your faith in him and, and call out to him and say, God, please save me. And then he makes that transaction happen. All right. You can't make that transaction happen with your intellect. Very important to remember that. So don't fall for the Calvinistic thing there. I have to kick that in verse four. We've been chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. That means you're predestinated. And no, no, the plan of salvation is fixed in him, in Christ. All right. But for you to get that salvation you have to get into christ we'll see that as we continue verse 6 to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved again see the confidence you see the eternal security there to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved unless you fall away unless you you know whatever no it's period Accepted in the beloved, period. Well, if you walk away from God, you can't walk away from God. If he purchases you, all right, it doesn't work. Verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Again, the confidence there, the, the looking at this and saying, you know, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. There's no unless or if, as long as you, you know, see, it's not there. It's not the same thing as what's going on in the book of Hebrews. All right. Now, take your little book here or whatever, put it there in Ephesians and go back to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 3. I'm going to show you some interesting things here. Hebrews chapter 3. Another way to prove that this whole thing is written to the Hebrews, to the Jews. Um, not written to a Christian in the church age, the time where we're now at. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was, was faithful in all his house. Remember the word house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath builded the house hath more honor than the house. 
For every house was built by some man, but he that built all things is God. For Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we? If, conditional clause again, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. It's a condition. I'm going to give you a million dollars if you give me 10 million first. What does that mean? See? Well, you, I, I'm here for my million dollars. Okay, where's my 10 million? See, I put a condition there. That's not me offering you a million dollars. If is a conditional clause. Always remember that. Verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. Were your fathers in the Old Testament? Well, if you're a Jewish Christian, yes. Um, I'm a Gentile. In spite of the fact that people think I'm Jewish. <laughs> uh, they think that I'm a, a Jew and whatever else. Uh, no, I'm Bavarian, German primarily. Um, you know, Denklinger, there's actually, you know, Denkling in town in Bavaria and Denklinger Rotwald in Bavaria. Um, things named after my ancestors. So, no, uh, we're not. Uh, Jewish okay but um, if you are Jewish your ancestry goes back to the Old Testament and they were you know being tempted out there in the wilderness oh well, the book of Hebrews is just it's written to Christians no it isn't it's not written to Gentiles it's written to Hebrews okay um, well let's continue verse 10 Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Take heed, brethren? Why? Why do you have to take heed? Do I have to take heed? Do you have to take heed? If you have an evil heart of unbelief. No, you don't. None of us have to, to, to worry about, oh, man, I just I had a really bad week and I just I kind of went against the Lord. And and I just started saying, you know what? I don't even know if the Bible's true. I'm just so depressed and whatever. And you'll get there. I mean, there's there's I think a lot of us can testify to that, that you get really low sometimes and just get kind of out, out of fellowship or just things are really going bad. And you, and you start to doubt the Lord. Did you lose your salvation when that happened? No, you didn't. But what about them? They're to take heed. Hmm. Doesn't that sound like they have eternal security? Verse 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called the day, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. What does that matter? Hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Take heed. Warning there, you know. See? Conditions. Verse 14, look for the conditional clause, if again. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Um, we're supposed to hold on to our own confidence? See the difference? Verse 15, while it is said today, if ye will harden your, or if he, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Now, if you use a new version, by the way, there in verse 16, they'll say all that came out of Egypt by Moses. When the King James Bible has not all. New versions are satanic. They're very hateful to the Jewish people. But uh, that you see this thing, I made a mention of it earlier, of the house this house and this house and then it's clearly given there about your father's provoking me in the wilderness okay so who's this house thing all about if you want more proof that the book of hebrews is actually written to the house of israel very interesting acts chapter 2 verse 36 has the words house of israel acts chapter 7 verse 42 house of israel and it stops from acts chapter 7 until you get to Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8, 
is when the next time house of israel shows up again see the book of acts is a transitional book the early christians were jews all the disciples were jews all right and they're going to the synagogue they're they're signs and wonders to confirm the word of the jewish people when the nation of israel the vast majority of them rejected jesus christ as their messiah even after he died and you know, was buried and rose again ascended back up to heaven they reject again okay here it is we're going to present it one more time to you the house of israel house of israel okay by the time you attacks chapter seven that's the last time and you start to see the transition away from just the jews now the gospel being taken to the gentiles you see that when you go through the book of acts so acts chapter 7 verse 42 is the last time house of israel is mentioned until you get to the book of hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8 that's the next time house of israel shows up only two times the new in the pauline epistles is the house of something mentioned second corinthians chapter 5 verses 1 through 4 mentions the house of this tabernacle it's talking about our bodies our body is the temple of the holy ghost all right it's not the house of of germany or the house of england or the house of france or spain or japan or you know africa no no house of israel and that's why the book of hebrews is written to this thing of your house the the house the house of moses you know your fathers tempted me in the wilderness 40 you know 40 years all right you see that first timothy chapter 3 verse 15 talks about the house of god so you do see that but it's not talking about the house of a particular nation that doesn't show up again until you hit the book of hebrews so that's why we're dispensational right when you are a bible believing christian you have to understand the dispensational nature of proper study of scripture you have to rightly divide you have to look and say well okay yeah the book of hebrews there's things going on here that can't be written to a christian in the church age all right and let me show you another real important verse there go back to galatians if you're unaware of this verse you can save for a while you probably know where i'm going with this but uh if galatians chapter 3 verse 28 another reason that you can just instantly without all this extra stuff you, you can just instantly know hey the book of hebrews can't be written to a christian a member of the body of christ why galatians chapter 3 verse 28 says there is neither jew nor greek there is neither bond nor nor free there is neither male nor female for ye are all one in christ jesus are there physical differences yes okay uh jews and gen or jews and greeks excuse me there um there are physical differences we look different um bond nor free people that are bond servants as opposed to those that are free are there were there differences there's not many that much of that left but uh at least not openly but um yeah there's differences how about uh, male or female are there some physical differences yes <laughs> but we're all one in christ jesus but you hit to the book of hebrews and you know i mean you have galatians ephesians going through it's talking about people in different geographic locations but then you go back to the house of israel back to the jewish people now we have a different system hebrews right understand the dispensational difference there understand that things have changed but let's go back to ephesians now turn over one book to the book of ephesians ephesians chapter 1 verses 10 through 14 we'll read those verses and again look at the eternal security and we'll see the word dispensation here ephesians chapter 1 verse 10 that in the, in the dispensation of the fullness of times that's not a title for what we're in by the way it's just saying he's dispensing things um he might gather together in one all things in christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in christ and whom he also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom after also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that holy spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory you are a purchased possession when you get saved show me that anywhere in the book of hebrews it's not there nobody in the book of hebrews gets purchased nobody 
And uh, where does it say anything about being sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise in the book of Hebrews? And, you know, you'll get these eternal security nuts that, that just, you know, and I, that they say it's always been eternal security and it always will, it always was. That's the nuts, okay? If you're believing in eternal security right now, you're not a nut. That's a Bible believer. But you get these nuts that try to teach eternal security and, that, and all throughout the Bible, any dispensation. And they'll, they'll go to the book of Hebrews and they'll get real philosophical when it says about if we hold the, the confidence, you know, our confidence steadfast, steadfast unto the end. Well, that's, that's just saying, um, you know, that you, if it were possible, you know, and they'll get real philosophical. They can't just deal with plain English, right? Um, you just compare Ephesians and Hebrews and you'll see there's two to totally different things going on. Just right there. I mean, like I said, show me anywhere in the book of Hebrews where it says you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, you know, unto the, the you know, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Where's the purchased possession in the book of Hebrews? Where's sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise? It's not there. It's not there. So let's go back to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. And again, we're going to see just a plain, right in your face, example of conditional security for a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, and if you're Jewish out there, by the way, and you're not you're not born again, uh, you would do very well to get saved right now. Because now there's it's eternal security. You say, well, I'm going to wait until the, you know, the body of Christ is gone, and I want to see the signs and everything to confirm that this New Testament is accurate. Okay, but then your salvation is going to be conditional based on your works. The Lord's not going to purchase you in that time period. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should come, seem to come short of it. Well, no, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. How do you reconcile the two? Ephesians chapter 1 says you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Your, pur your purchase possession. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1, let us therefore fear. Lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. There, there's that promise. You get saved. Sure, you're promised that you can go to heaven. But any of you should seem to come short of it. Are you afraid of that today, Christian? That you're going to come short of it? You get up there and the Lord's going to say, depart from me, you curse it, I never knew you. Huh? Well, you messed around with a little bit of sin there towards the end. You, you weren't real faithful, so I, I would have let you in, but you just kind of ticked me off at the end there, so sorry. No, it doesn't work that way right now. Um, time of Jacob's trouble. Oh, you're on fire for the Lord and everything's going great. You're a, a Jew over there in Israel and, and you're getting people attacking you and family turned against you. And, you know, you just finally say, you know, I've had enough of this. I got to get back to work. I want to get some food in my stomach. It's been just so hard. OK, give me the mark. Um, let me worship the beast in his image. All right. The Lord's not going to say, well, you did pretty good there. You're eternally secure. Uh, -uh. If any man takes the mark, worships the beast and his image, he gets God's wrath period. Now's the time to get saved. Okay. <laughs> now let's go to Matthew chapter 24 and I'll show you where this conditional security plays out in the time of Jacob's trouble. And Matthew chapter 24 is the time of Jacob's trouble. It has nothing at all to do with the church of Jesus Christ, the church of the living God right now. Matthew chapter 24 verse 45 through 51 who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler, ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing, doing, action, it's works. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. Hmm. Going and having fellowship with the lost people, in other words. 
The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He goes to hell. Servant of the Lord gets messing around with fellowshipping with lost people, and the Lord comes back, go down to hell. Conditional. You see? Salvation in the future is conditional. And you're not going to be doing too much fellowshipping with the lost people in the time of Jacob's trouble unless you take the mark and worship the beast in his image. I don't care how saved saved somebody is in the, in the future time of Jacob's trouble. They leave the Lord and they go and they take the mark of the beast. They're cut off. Simple. Back to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. You say, I, I just, I can't believe that you're teaching works, salvation in the future. Well, faith and works, yes. But um, I just can't believe it. I can't believe that you're a false prophet and all this stuff. Okay, look at verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Labor to enter into the rest? Well, that's rewards, not what the rest is there. That's not what it's talking about. Go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 13 and 14. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Say, so, well, see, it's, it's talking about rewards. It's not at all what it says. Just read the context plainly. He that shall endure unto the end, his works shall be saved. He that shall endure unto the end, his treasures in heaven that he laid up shall be saved. The same. The same is what? He. You see? Oh, well, it just means saved physically. Then why does it mention the gospel of the kingdom in the next verse? All right? And... And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. It's tying the two verses together. So again, false prophets, another way that you can find these, these uh, non-dispensational, because that's really what they are. If you teach faith alone in every dispensation and eternal security in every dispensation, you're not really a dispensationalist. Okay, And again, watch out for that because you will see that. You will see people that say, I'm, I'm a dispensationalist. And then they teach the same salvation and eternal security the whole way through everything. Then they're not a dispensationalist. They're lying. They're deceivers. Watch out for that movement as well. Um, there's a bunch of them out there. But uh, Matthew chapter 24, one of the, the best ways to spot one of these, these fakers is they'll try to mess with the plain teaching there. Um, he that shall endure in the end you know, shall be saved. Uh, well, it doesn't really mean that. Yes, it does. Let's go back to Ephesians now. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. And again, we're going to see this, this, the confidence that we have, as Christians have and the, the lack of confidence there, the fear and the works that are involved for a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble and anybody else that wants to get saved too in that time. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace. Ye are saved and has raised, hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Unless, um, if, um, but you have to be there in fear. No, it's saying right now. It isn't even, well, someday when you die, if you make, no, no, right now, I'm seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's right there. And so are you if you're born again. Your eternal uh, security, your salvation is already fixed. It's already a done deal. You don't lose salvation. and The Lord has to cut you out of his body and then he, oh, you got saved again? Okay, I'll put you back and, and everything else there. Okay, it's not that way. Eternal security begins when the Lord saves you, 
not when you make your intellectual decision to save yourself by thinking in your mind of some facts that you believe. That's not salvation. I get Robert Breaker's followers, and they always are doing this thing, and calling is, is a work, and you know, the whole deal, and, and I, I got saved when I believed, and now I see nice things in my life. And I say, so it was your intellectual decision? What was it that saved you? Was it God that saved you or your intellectual decision? Good way to answer, ask a question to these fakers. And they'll always say, well, you know, I, when I believe the facts of the gospel, so that's your intellectual decision. That's not salvation. God has to do the saving. All right. Um, verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Are there any conditions attached to that? No. Verse 8, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's not your belief. It's not your prayer that you pray. Okay? Let's not get that confused either. I'm not saying anybody that calls on the Lord, no matter what belief they have in their heart or what thinking or what, they just, you get saved. No, I'm not saying that. There are conditions that you have to meet to be saved. Certainly. Right? That's that's there. But it's God that does the saving. I can't, you know, anybody here wants to be saved, say, you know, raise your hand and I'll pray for you. What does that do? You know, I can pray for people, you know, Lord, give so-and-so a chance to get saved and whatever else. But ultimately, it's your decision. It's their decision. All of you out there that are struggling with lost, you know, family members, it's their decision. And you can pray and fast and do whatever and say, God, save them. God, save them. And they can still go to hell because it has to be between them and God. And God is the one that has to save that person. Always remember that. Um it is the gift of God, verse 8. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. Certainly. Right now. Absolutely. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Good works are there, but they come after salvation as proof that it took, that it's, that it's real. It's a true conversion. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in. And again, the good works that you do after you get saved, it's its about sanctification. It's about getting away from sin and make, making a mess of your life. You know, the young brother that said about, you know, hey, I got victory over the video game thing. Well, praise the Lord. That's a good work that you do after you get saved. You don't have to give up your video games to be saved, to get saved. Um, but when the Lord saves you and he, and he convicts you about that thing and you get rid of it, well, guess what? You're going to have... A lot of benefits that come into your life because you've given up a useless activity. You get rid of the junk food and, and you get rid of cigarettes of, of getting drunk. You get rid of, you know, Hollywood movies and, and the wicked you know music out there and whatever else. It's all good for you. That's why God ordained those things, that you should walk in those things. I mean, you don't do them. You can make a mess of your life. But, you know, if you do those those things that are good. Lord will bless you. But again, you see there, this, this whole thing going through Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, is just confidence. It's just assurance, blessed assurance of salvation. Just It's there. And you look at the book of Hebrews, it's the opposite. In the book of Matthew, chapter 24 especially, you go through there and it's just, there's so many conditions that have to be met. I mean, it, you know, and you think about going into that time of Jacob's trouble as a Jew or a Gentile. Because they're split up. Again, read Revelation chapter 7 if you want proof on that. God sees 144,000, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. And he sees the Gentiles. And they're separated groups. He doesn't say, oh, well, you're all one in Christ Jesus. That's gone. That ends with the rapture. The catching up of the body of Christ. So, but um, now let's get back to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Says here, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Hold fast your profession? Doesn't sound like you have much confidence. You have to hold fast your profession. Hmm. Go over to chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10. 
Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. There you see it again. Without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. God's faithful, but you have to be faithful as well in the time of Jacob's trouble. Verse 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Remember what we read in Matthew chapter 24 about the different, the two different servants. The one is good and he's, and he's exhorting the brethren saying, Let's, he's almost here. He's going to be coming. They're looking. They're not walking completely by faith towards the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Uh, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. They can see the day approaching. Mm -hmm. They aren't going to know the day or the hour of the second coming, of the coming of the Son of Man, but they can know an approximate time and kind of get an idea. And you say, well, then it wouldn't be hard to look for Jesus if you know he's going to come at a certain time. Oh, it's going to be hard. Okay. If you know, hey, we have four or five months yet somewhere in there, you know, and there's no food and there's no this and we're being hunted down like animals or whatever. It would be very tempting. All right. To just quit on the Lord in that time period there. Time of Jacob's trouble. But how does that line up for us? We don't know the day of the catching up of the body of Christ. We have no idea. We can't say, hey, you know what? The Antichrist was. Uh, Unleashed back there in, in uh, 2013, towards the end of 2013. So, hey, seven years. We're almost at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. By December of this year, it could be we're going to be seeing the Lord. We don't have any clue at all. When's the catching up of the body of Christ going to happen? I don't know. I have no idea. People try to predict it all the time. You have no idea. I have no idea. None of us do. You see? So why would people use Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 to guilt trip you to go to some church building? Yet they all do it. And not one of them can see the day approaching. Hmm. Almost a kind of a non-dispensational heresy. Okay. <laughs> but what does the Bible, what, is, what does the New Testament say, the, the Pauline epistles written to Christians? Are there any things that we're supposed to hold fast? I'm going to give you the scripture references here. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says, Hold fast that which is good. You don't have to hold fast your profession. 2 Thessalonians 2.15 says, Stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. You don't have to hold fast your profession. They do in the book of Hebrews. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13, Hold fast the form of sound words. King James Bible. Oh, you're King James only. Yes, I am. Amen. King James Bible believer. I'm supposed to hold fast the form of sound words. You say, what about your profession, Brian? No. What about somebody in the future? Yeah, they're going to have to hold fast their profession. If they don't, go back to the world, take the mark, worship the beast in his image, they lose it. Go back to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 12. And again, Hebrews written to the Hebrews, to the Jews. But look at this. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Who's he writing to? Gentiles. Okay, it's not the same as what's going on in the book of Hebrews. Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, between the Jews and the Gentiles. Galatians 3, 28. Verse 15. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain, Jews and Gentiles, one new man, so making peace. 
Hmm. It's not the same as what's going on over there in the book of Hebrews and in Matthew chapter 24. Verse 16. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. The trouble between the Jews and the Gentiles, the fighting. There's enmity. And the Lord says, stop that. You're all one in Christ. But then he brings it back in the time of Jacob's trouble. Hmm. Verse 17, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. So sorry to the uh, modalist wingnuts out there that teach that uh, God the Father is a spirit and the Holy Spirit is a spirit. And Jesus had his own spirit and whatever. Well, that's three spirits, you know, and then the Father and the Son both in eternity past were two spirits. And then there was another kind of a spirit that kind of they shared between, you know, there's one spirit. Uh, verse 19, I got into a little comment battle just yesterday with a, one of these crazy nut modalists, but uh, on this whole thing, I'm trying to say there's only, there's two spirits. There's no three within, within God. It's just two. Okay. Verse 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Uh, oh, I, I skipped verse 19. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, not of the house of Israel, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Not some impersonal, you know, whatever, like, some of these nuts teach, all right? We're both one. It's right there. Go down to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, or, okay, we are not in dispensation of the grace of God. That's Again, it's not a title. It's just saying there's this dispensation that we are in. God is dispensing his grace towards you, all right? Um, verse 3, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote of four and few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Um, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now look at this, verse 12. Here's the important one to get. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Boldness, confidence. Does that sound like doubt? Does that sound like a condition on your eternal security, on your salvation? No, we can have boldness and confidence. Okay. Confidence. Remember that. You put your little marker in the book of Ephesians. And we're going to go back to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Anybody that wants to teach that these two books are the same, that's teaching the same gospel and the same, you know, thing on eternal security, they are just, they're lost. Um, there's just no way that you, you can get these two books together and they're teaching the same thing. No, they are not. We, the body of Christ, we have boldness and we have confidence. Look what we read here in Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Did you sin willfully after you got saved? 
Mm -hmm. Yes, you did. You know you did. I have. Well, there's no more sacrifice for sins. And, you know, the, the wingnut people that are non-dispensationalists, they'll say, well, that's right, because there is no more sacrifice for sins. You don't have to get resaved. <laughs> you know, you can just, there's no more sacrifice for sins. When you sin willfully, you don't have to get saved again because there's no more sacrifice for sins. Okay, well, then keep reading and you'll see that, that the next verse destroys their whole little twisting of the scripture. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. The lost people well that's the judgment seat of christ that fire doesn't devour the adversaries okay it's talking about you go to hell if you sin willfully after that you receive the knowledge of the truth verse 26 you go to hell in verse 27. how is that true for a christian in the church age it isn't it's not there for us we have boldness we have confidence there's no boldness there's no confidence there if you sin if you mess up you go to hell and you burn Compared to Matthew chapter 24, like we read earlier. Verse 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and hath done despite under the Spirit of grace? For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Who's the his people in context? The house of Israel. Remember, they're back now again. They disappear in Acts chapter 7 and they come back in Hebrews chapter 8. And they're referred to in Hebrews there, chapter 3, chapter 4 in that area. Hmm. The Lord's going to judge his people. Verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Find me that in the in the uh, book of Ephesians. I mean, you'll see in the Pauline epistles, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Hey, go on out there. Highways and byways. Go preach the gospel to every creature. It's a fearful thing for them. You know, the terror of the Lord is upon them. We persuade men, the lost world. The fear It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's written to these people. Here. Hmm. Verse 32. But call to remembrance the former days in which, after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions, partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. For ye had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Um, there looks like they're losing everything after a certain event happens. Hmm. Almost like there's a catching up of the body of Christ and the Antichrist shows up and all of a sudden they have to flee. And they have to leave all their stuff behind, kind of like Lot left Sodom and Gomorrah. Almost. Hmm. But look at verse 35. Boldness and confidence in the book of Ephesians. But look here. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Paul on epistles. Where does it say anything at all about you? You have boldness and confidence, but don't you cast it away because you've got to remember that you'll be rewarded for it. There's nothing at all like that in the Paul on epistles. In the book of Ephesians there, we just read. But yet over here in Hebrews, they're told, cast not away, therefore. Um, your confidence. Let me make sure I have my wording right. It's teaching the same thing, Brother Brian. No, it's not. No, it isn't. Hebrews and Ephesians are two diametrically opposed books of the Bible. But it's all in the New Testament. The whole New Testament's written to us. No, it isn't. You're not studying. You see? This thing took me days to go through all the scriptures. And this has been this this sermon itself has been in my mind for a while i should put something together on that and compare you know do a thing on the book of hebrews and i've had people request it before could you do some expository stuff on hebrews well this isn't exactly expository verse by verse but it's we're going through a lot of the basics of what hebrews is about it's clearly the more you study it it's clearly written to jews in the time of jacob's trouble and it is going to be rough for them 
very rough. They have to endure to the end to be saved. They can't cast away their confidence. Hmm. Go back to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 through 6. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in these people. You see? Made partakers of the heavenly gift. Holy Ghost is in them. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. And it's so funny because I, I dealt with a charismatic back when we were in Eldred, Pennsylvania. And um, and he was going off about you can lose your salvation and, and it's up to you to remain holy and whatever. And he went to this verse right here, this passage, Hebrews 6, verses 4 through 6. And he said right there, he said, see, you can lose your salvation. And I said, OK, if you mess up and you get into sin, I said, uh, can you get resaved? He said, well, of course I can get resaved. I said, that's not what it says. It's not what it says. If you want to make that for a Christian, it says it is impossible. Verse four, you can't come back. So it's so funny. These charismatic nuts and other uh, these non-dispensational nuts out there, they'll try to use this thing and, and whatever to say that you can lose your salvation. But then they all teach that you can get it back again. And that's not what the verse is saying. There's a condition there on salvation in the future. It's right there in front of your face. And the only two people that deny it are those who are just completely blind to the scriptures and those who can see it and want to deny it because they know that they're going to lose their salvation in the future. Those are the only two groups. Don't tell me, well, we can agree to disagree on this. No, we can't. It's plain. Where in the, again, book of Ephesians. You can just keep things simple here. You see, go back to the book of Ephesians. Where's any of this language at? It's impossible if you fall away to renew you again to repent. We have boldness and confidence, but if you fall away, it's impossible to get you back. Sorry. There isn't anything in Ephesians like this. In the book of Hebrews, there's doubt and doubt and doubt, and you better be careful. Take heed. You see? They're not teaching the same things. Ephesians chapter 4. Go back to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Ephesians 4, 17, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance of that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work on uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, comparing lost with saved. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Is there supposed to be a changed life after salvation? Yes, and only a lost person would reject that. Only lost people would say, well, you just continue in your sin, no conscience, no, don't worry about it, everything's fine. No, that is not true. Um, verse 25, wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to him to give to him that needeth. Change life. Here's a bank robber gets saved and he's out there working now and he goes up to poor people and says, here, this is for you. So well, aren't you that bank robber? Did you did you rob the bank and get this? No, I worked for it. Praise the Lord. There you go. Wow. What a change. That's what true salvation is today. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. I, it always amazes me. I see these people that profess to be Christians and they just cuss a blue streak and there's just no, there isn't. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I let that word slip. Up. 
I do, you know, you get saved. One of the first things that will get cleaned up is your language. That corrupt communication that used to proceed out of your mouth, it changes like that. All of a sudden, you, you don't want to hear not only just your own profanity, but you don't want to hear the profanity of lost people. It bothers you. And yet you get these professing Christians and they just, no problems at all with swearing. I can watch movies. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me one bit. Because you're lost. You're not born again. Verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the time that you mess up. You are sealed until you fall away. No, unto the day of redemption. Not until the day when you decide to be whatever. Until the day that he decides to say, come on up, redeeming my purchased possession. I bought you. I own you. I've been telling you what to do, punishing you when you do wrong, blessing you when you do right. And now son, now daughter, come home. Come on. Let's have a party up here. Come on home. Oh, that that day might be today. Verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. For a Christian today, again, do we see this stuff in the book of Hebrews? Well, in, in a sense, yeah, you're, they're supposed to be exhort one another and things as they see the day approaching. Sure. But we don't see the day approaching. We don't know when that day is going to happen. We can't say. We can't kind of time it out like they, they're going to be able to. It's a different situation. All right? You got to get the differences in Scripture. Now let's go back to Hebrews chapter 12. We're working towards the end of the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. They're looking for the Lord. They're looking out in the future saying we're going to see him if we just hold fast the confidence of our, our steadfast the confidence, you know, on firm unto the end. I always get that wording mixed up in my head. Um, looking diligently. Hmm. Lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For we know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. You mess up in the time of Jacob's trouble, you're finished. Well, I, I made a mistake. You know, you get this demonic teaching that Breaker has taught, taught and Gene Kim has taught. And they, you know, Ruckman, I think, even kind of mentioned it just as a maybe it's possible. No, it's not. It's stupid. And that is you take the mark of the beast in your hand. You see the Lord coming and you go Whoa, and you cut off your hand or, you know, well, it's in my forehead. So I have to gouge out that part and rip my eye out, too, or something because it says about plucking out your own eyes. So it's kind of. Ripping from the forehead down through the eyeball. Stupid. That is stupid beyond question. <laughs> okay. Uh, there, there isn't anything like that. It's not going to be that way. All right. Why? For we know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing. Hey, the millennial kingdom. Jesus is coming. He was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Esau, you gave it up. Hey, Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble, you gave up your promise of the millennial inheritance of Jerusalem, the city of the great king. And you gave it up when you took that mark of the beast and you worshipped his image. When you worshipped him in his image. You gave that up. There's no more chance there. You can't lop off your hand or gouge out your forehead and your eyeball. That's stupid. Don't ever fall for that nonsense. All right? Jump down to verse 25. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. 
For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Book of Ephesians, where's this stuff at? It's not there. It's not there. But it's here. You see, what's it lining up with? Turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven is mentioned in Matthew chapter 11. The violent take it by force. It's an earthly physical kingdom. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. They're not going out to marry. There's a chaste virgin. In the book of Revelation, chapter 19, he sees a bride, the bride of Christ, not a whole bunch, you know, ten different women, ten different different virgins. They're going out. These ones are going out to meet the bridegroom. I did a whole study on the ten virgin thing. It has nothing to do with the body of Christ and the rapture and whatever else. Verse 2, and five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. They're repentant. They're sorry. They, they, they just didn't have the oil, and they, they have it. Now they're ready to go. What's the Lord say? But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Hmm. Watch, therefore. Very interesting. Um, Hebrews chapter uh, 12, verse 25. Um, yeah, Hebrews ch chapter 12, verse 25. See that you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. It lines up. Hebrews. Matthew 24, Matthew 25, it all matches. You go to the Pauline epistles, well, this doesn't fit here, and that doesn't fit there. I remember some, uh, I'm going to go next to, uh, go to get you going to the thing here, Hebrews chapter 13. Turn back to the book of Hebrews. A couple more places to turn to here, but I remember years ago, one of the first Baptist churches, well, actually the first Baptist church I went to, after I got saved, um, Cornerstone Baptist Church is what it was called, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. And there was a guy, Chuck Taft, and I think he was a Jesuit. I mean, the guy was just very wicked. A lot more to the story than that. I could offer plenty of proof, but whatever. And I remember him saying, you know, about he prayed the one time. He'd always do these real big prayers and lots of, you know, like big pharisaical prayer. And, and you know, oh, God, help us to aspire to attain to the level of, level of holiness of of the believers in the, in the book of Hebrews, you know, and at the time I thought, huh, something doesn't sound right there. And I didn't know it. And all these years later, I realized, you know, he was non-dispensationalist and he was trying to make the book of Hebrews, you know, church age doctrine. And it's not, but, you know, attained the level of holiness, you know, <laughs> sure. Hebrews chapter 13, verse one through three, or again, we're going to see comparisons here between Hebrews and Matthew, the book of Matthew. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1 through 3. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Angels don't have wings, by the way. That's You will never find that anywhere in the scriptures. Cherubim, seraphim, they have wings. Angels never have wings. They show up, and, and a lot of times the people don't know. You know they, have, they have to prove that they're an angel. Right? There's no wings on angels. So get that out of your head. Verse 3. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. You say, well, what's the significance there? Put your little bookmark back in Hebrews. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 24. Or excuse me, 25. 
Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 through 40. The judgment of the nations here. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Remember them that are in bonds. Book of Hebrews. Hmm. Verse 37, Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? When saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So, and then you see the opposite in verse 41 down through. You'll see the opposite of you didn't come and visit me in prison, and, and therefore, you know, you're going to go into the lake of fire, essentially. So, again, a very interesting thing there. But go back to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 13 and 14. We'll read that. We'll see another tie into Matthew chapter 24 here. Very interesting one. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 13 through 14. And by the way, let me just say this. The book of Hebrews does have some instruction and in righteousness in it. Absolutely. I'm not saying you just ignore the book of Hebrews. Don't just rip it out of your Bible. Oh, no, absolutely not. There's a lot of things you can get in the Old Testament. Um, the whole way through time of Jacob's trouble type books and book of revelation. There's a lot of great stuff, but you have to be careful to rightly divide and say, well, this isn't written to us. That would be written to a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's simple when you understand the, the, how it works. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 13, let us go forth. Therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach for here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Hmm. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. You're going to have to leave and go outside of the city. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Hmm. Stay there in the book of Hebrews. Put your little mark there, book of Hebrews, and go back to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. Matthew 24, verse 15 says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains without the camp. Hmm. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Remember what we read in the book of Hebrews there about the spoiling of their goods and things and and uh, made a gazing stock and they're being reproached, reproached for the Lord. Um, verse 18, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes and woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Another way that you know it's not for a Christian. Because Romans 13, verse 9, lists the commandments, and there's nothing about keeping the Sabbath day or remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy. There isn't anything like that. Sorry to the Seventh-day Adventists out there. Well, not really sorry, but, you know. Verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Hmm. Ties in perfectly with the book of Hebrews chapter 13. And, uh, well, well, this is very important, though, for us as Christians. Why? Are you in Judea? Do you have a city? I mean, where does the body of Christ have a, have a city 
that's connected with the body of Christ. The house of Israel has a city, but we don't as Christians. There's no city here. Uh, it's funny because Satan's church, the Roman Catholic Church, they have a city, Vatican City. But uh, the body of Christ, do you have a holy city? No. We seek one to come, New Jerusalem. They'll have to seek one to come. And uh, what's the what's the city that the Jews, by the way, in the time of Jacob's trouble, what's the city that they're seeking to come? I might ask that question as well. You say New Jerusalem. Well, maybe ultimately, eventually, I guess. But they're seeking to see their king, their Messiah, rule and reign for a thousand years on the earth, physically on the earth. Hmm. A little bit of difference between us and them. But let's go back to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. And again, we're going to see more works here, more conditional security. You have security in Christ, but there's conditions for the people in the future. We have security in Christ right now. We have confidence. We have boldness. We're sealed. We have promises that are given to us. We have eternal security. They don't. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hmm. The God of peace makes you perfect in every good work to do his will. God will help them. In the time of Jacob's trouble, then certainly God will help those people. But it's all conditional. They're not to cast away their confidence. They're to endure to the end. They're all those different things. What about a Christian? Turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Last passage. So you can take out your little bookmark thing. Ephesians chapter 6. Keep forgetting to put my bookmarks in different places. I got to turn back now. Not a problem. It's good exercise, you know. Turning here, turning there. You, you know, newly saved. It's going to be a little. Wait, wait a second. Where's that book at? But you've been saved for a while. You've been in the book for a while. You'll you'll get it. Ephesians chapter six, verse twenty-three through twenty-four. This is where we'll end it. Peace be to the brethren. Well, it's called works, right? Uh, keep reading and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace be with all them that are that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity amen confidence peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ there you go cheers well, what do we have to do what if they what if the mark of the beast kid they're gonna come here today and they might make me do no I might not have a choice. If I want to keep my job, I'm going to have to take the mark. No, it's not there. I mean, you have to take stands for the Lord and everything, but you don't have to worry about your salvation being lost. But in the future, they do. So very important study because we are getting close. I don't know how close, but we are getting close to the Lord saying, okay, that's enough. Redemption of the purchase possession, come up hither. We'll get there, but uh, if you fall away and you really get messed up and you uh, stop looking for the Lord and you begin to act stupid and you even get drunk and whatever else, you're not going to lose your salvation. That's not there. Uh, a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble? Yeah, they can lose their salvation. They mess around, take the mark, uh, quit looking for the Lord. They're going to lose it. They can cast away their confidence. All right. So um, watch out for the non-dispensational heretics out there that will try to get you off of these points here and, and, and try to try to force the book of Hebrews into combining it with the, the book of, you know, Ephesians. They're not the same. All right. And watch out. Like I said, these these people that, that are saying it, we're I'm dispensational and salvation has always been by faith alone. And we always have eternal security. That's the non-dispensational system. And I've showed this thing in the past. You know, this they're, they're, I mean, there are literally people coming out now and saying, 
historical dispensationalism is faith alone always and eternal security always. That is non-dispensationalism. Okay, that's another one of Satan's little end time little schemes, little traps that he likes to use. So, all right, let's close with a word of prayer and then we'll get into the comment thing over there. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you, Lord, for a great challenge from your word. I know it was a real blessing, Lord, you showing me all of those things and, and just comparing the amazing promises that we have right now in the body of Christ. I thank you for saving me and in this time and not uh, making it that I have to go into a time where I could lose it if I fall away. And uh, Lord, if there are any Jews out there, especially that, that uh, are watching this, and I know it costs a Jew a lot. Um, Gentiles that can get saved and their family kind of hates them a little bit, but a Jew, they families will actually have funerals and, and say that they don't, you're no longer my son, you're no longer my daughter. Um, I know it's very, very rough for a Jew um, to, to get saved nowadays, but it's going to be even worse in the future. And I pray that they would take heed to what I've said and, and get saved. Um, get, get things sorted out between you and them. Uh, you are their Messiah. You are their savior. Um, and they need to come broken and cry out to you to save them and uh, believe that you died on the cross and that you were buried and that you rose again and your blood can wash away all their sins, Lord. And I do pray for that. I pray that you help us to be bold, Lord, that, that we would not be deceived by hyper dispensationalists or by these non dispensationalists coming along and, and messing around with salvation and saying that people in the future have a, eternal security. Um, I do pray that we would all stand against them and, and just call them liars, Lord, because that's what they are. And I just ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Now. Um, all right. Let me get the uh, YouTube. Okay. I guess did the comments come back or something? Yeah, okay. It must have just been. There's no point in me trying to hide comments or whatever else. Whatever. Um, so that's back. Okay. Where are we at here? Question. Second Thessalonians, I guess is what you're saying there. 2-2. Two, two. Um, Tyndale, Geneva, and other pre-King James Version Bibles say departing instead of falling away. If falling away is correct, are we expecting that wicked one to be revealed? No, because you keep reading in context, the wicked one, um, you know, the that wicked shall be revealed. He who now letteth shall let until he be taken out of the way. So you keep reading. All post-tribbers, you know, they'll go with this whole thing if they read a few verses and then they just quit. Um, they can't seem to get past verse 3 in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. So no, we have to be taken out of the way in order for the that wicked to be revealed. Um, and you know, I'll say that a lot of the translations that were before the King James Bible, they, you know, these guys you got to have grace for them. Tyndale and Coverdale and some of these, they were one man trying to bring out translations, and they're they're working on their translation, you know. And all of a sudden, somebody comes running in, you know, run! The, the soldiers are coming down the street; they're coming for you, and they're grabbing their manuscripts and running, you know. It's not any way to translate a Bible. I mean, that's that's a bad thing. The committee that was there for the King James Bible, they had seven years, the king's protection. Take your time, do it right. And um, certainly the, you know, I believe God honored the translations that came before the King James Bible, the authorized version of 1611. But that when they did the authorized version of 1611, that's when God said, OK, now let's get some things straightened out here. So. That's my belief on that. Um, question, Hebrews 13, verse 5. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I get confused on this, brother. Hebrews confuses me a lot. I think you are definitely correct about it being for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, God doesn't leave them, but they can leave God in that time period. Uh, if you do right, God's not going to say, oh, I, you know, I kind of changed my mind. You know, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. That's what it's saying. You can rely on God in that time period. His promises are true. The second coming will come, you know, uh, seven years after the Antichrist, essentially. I mean, right in that area there, because he shortens the days and whatever. But you can rely on God, is what that verse is saying in the book of Hebrews. 
Question, point, part one of three, should we claim bankruptcy? I know that you have answered that question twice now, but it seemed like the answers were different and we were wondering if you can please clarify. Um, we're living in a fifth wheel RV off grid except power parked on farm working too, or in keep and, and still can't get any debt paid off because expenses keep coming up to mark, make our V livable. Um, done being part of the credit system, do not have truck to pull the RV. Still have a lot of expenses coming up to prepare for winter. Please help us see what is right according to God's will. Well, you know, the wicked, you know, borroweth and payeth not again. So, you know, you have to, that's in Proverbs. You have to be careful of that to just declare bankruptcy. You know, if you got yourself into it, the Lord can help you get out of it. Um, just pray and say, okay, Lord, can we cut out? Do we have cell phones that we can cut out? Do we have other payments? Are we making vehicle payments? Are we, you know, whatever else? Um, I get that the whole system is corrupt and, and terrible and whatever, and the credit card thing is a scam, and I get it. I get it. But, you know, I think that you should pay it off. Um, and just what I believe on that. Um, just pray the Lord will give you the money to pay it off. Question, is the Solomon's prayer to Lord answer any Gentiles that seeks him still valid? Solomon's prayer to the Lord answer any Gentiles. Not really sure on that one. I'm not really sure what you're saying on that. Um, where do you get your custom signs and t-shirts? Um, Buildasign.com, I think, is the name of the mag magnet sticker magnets for my back of my truck. Um, and then the t-shirt thing is just t-shirts.com, I think. I did a video on both of them, so you can look that up. Just do a search. Go to my channel, do a search for t-shirts or, or magnetic signs, and it'll get you the videos. Do you think children born in Tom Jacob's Trouble have the mark put on them at birth? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, and if they would, it wouldn't matter because... Uh, you know, they have to worship the beast and his image, you know, those two there and take his mark. So there's three things that damn somebody to hell. Um, and the first two a child's not going to be able to do. They can't worship the beast. And, you know, I'll say it this way. It's actually the be the last two because it's take the mark, worship the beast and his image. So worshiping the beast and his image, a baby can't do it. So even if they would put an implantable microchip in them when they come out, it doesn't mean anything for a child. Um, question where does the bible say that at the rapture will hear come up hither um well it's in the book of revelation uh chapter four is where you hear he's john and he's on the island of patmos and he looks up and he sees a door open in heaven you got to compare scripture with scripture okay post trippers are very very lazy people they won't go and compare scripture with scripture um, you look at John, he sees a door open in heaven. Jesus talks about, I'm the door of the sheep, you know, uh, in John chapter 10, like I said, you compare scripture with scripture. He hears a voice. We hear the trump of God, first Corinthians 15, first Thessalonians chapter four. The trump is the voice of the trumpet. It's a voice. It's the sound the trumpet makes. Compare all these scriptures together and you will see very plainly that, you know, John looks up to heaven, he sees a door open, he hears a voice, as it were, a trumpet speaking with him, and it says, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately he's in the spirit. What is that? It's the catching up of the body of Christ. It's right there. John experiences it. The Bible doesn't have to say, John is there, and, and you know, all the other saints that have gotten saved, and they all go up to you. No, John is being shown something, a future event. So that's what's going on there. Um, but good question. Is not Hebrews 4.10 relevant in a way for us having rushed from our works today, not having confidence in the flesh, moving in the spirit? John 6.28, can you? Yeah, sure. Instruction in righteousness. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You can go back to the Levitical law and find good things that apply to you today. Um, doctrinally, you got to be careful. Okay, so how I, how I would answer that. Um, who are the gods in John 10, 34 and 35? I said, you are gods, I think is 
trying to think of how this verse goes. Let me just look it up real quick here. Sometimes it's a little quicker to do the sword searcher thing. Um, yeah, Jesus answered them, "It is. Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken." Um, yeah, that's that's one I can't just answer off the top of my head. It's um, it's Old Testament reference there. Um, I'd have to do more study on that one. Okay, that's kind of a bigger question. Just to be honest with you, I can't answer all the questions. I try my best at these question and answer things, but stuff like that is, is going to take more study. Um, you know, Jesus is basically saying to them there that, you know, he's saying, I'm calling myself the son of God and you're angry. But yet the law in the Old Testament is saying, you know, comparing people to gods. So what's going on here? There's, you know, why are they so ticked off? Because they realized that he was calling himself almighty God. But uh, question, could you please refer to the verses that prove that the first horseman is the Antichrist for future reference? Um, well, you compare Revelation 19, Revelation chapter 6, the two different horsemen there. Okay. Um, I'll just do that quick. Revelation chapter 19, the rider on that horse has many crowns, and he's clearly Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 6. Uh, verse 1, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. The Lamb opens the seal. That's Jesus Christ opens the seal. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given him unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Compare that to the book of Daniel. What does the Antichrist come and do? By peace he destroys many. He comes in peaceably and obtains the kingdom by flatteries. He's a conqueror. That's what he does. Okay. Jesus Christ. He that sits on this horse is, is faithful and true and you know righteousness and, and whatever else. You compare that Revelation 19 rider to Revelation chapter 6 rider. They're not the same. Remember, Jesus Christ comes back on a white horse. The Antichrist comes on a white horse because he is a counterfeit Christ. Okay. Question, what is the last day in the Gospel of John? Is that the second coming? Or our rapture. Um, not sure which verse. Let me just check on that quick. Last day. Um, raise him up at the last day. Well, I believe it's okay. Um, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Um, I would say the thousand year time period there, the day of the Lord, I believe that's what's talking about. One day is what the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So I believe that that's what it's talking about, the last day. Because there's a lot of different verses that would line up with that. It has to begin with the second coming and then go through the thousand year kingdom um, question what Bible verses should I memorize um, well um, there's a lot I did a, a study years ago on um, the key scriptures like the most important ones to memorize so you can look that study up um, just to answer that Okay, question. If we have to go into places that require masks, should we wear medical exemption cards or take a stand and wear nothing, risking a fine? City gave med cards, say, please give me two meters of space. Um, it, it's, it's a continuing battle. You know, that's up to you. I can't answer that question. Um, again, you know, take my advice, people. Get out of the cities. Okay, out here, nobody cares if you have a mask on or not. Um, there's a few stores that do, there's a few stores that are stupid and nutty, and I just, I don't go to them, you know, and we just do without certain things, and, you know, uh, our son Oliver right now, he's really getting into activity books, you know, coloring books, or connect the dot, and whatever else, and there's a store in the area that, that has them, but they have, you know, big thing, face masks required, fine, I'm not going there, don't need it, I can get it online, or whatever I have to do, um, but if I was in the city, would I be running into people saying put on your face mask i'm sure i would 
but that's why we left the city years ago. Okay. Um, is there some way you can wear a medical exemption card? Sure. Do that. Um, if, if they force you to, to wear a mask, just simply say, I, I can't, I don't believe, you know, there's a whole lot of things you can do. Use it as a time to witness. Use, you know, you're going to have to do your own research. I can't be there for, for people and give you, here's what to say, you know, that's up to you. Um, question, question, how should we prepare if we must endure the destruction of America? Get off grid. Um, I'm not worried at all about power outages. I know in California right now they're having a lot of power outages and all this violence and everything else. We're not experiencing any. You know, while people are making fun of me for moving out in the middle of nowhere, um, you know, we were getting ready for this stuff. So uh, it's something you have to pray about because there's some people that can't get out of harm's way. You're there. You're going to go through it. Um, just say, Lord, please help me to get through this. If I have to die, well, okay, I get to go home first. You know, dead in Christ shall rise first, I'm saying. That's all I can say. Um Hebrews 5 9 says, Christ is the author of eternal salvation to those that obey him. Is this a good proof text for conditional security in the time of Jacob's trouble? Yeah, absolutely. Very good point. Excellent point. Ephesians 1 13 through 14, something learned a couple days ago. The word earnest stood out and reminded me of the modern term of earnest money. Amazing. Yeah, very good, very good point there. Um, Hi Ryan, off topic. Could there be a short dispensation between the catching away and the time of it, the time the Antichrist shows up? How would they get saved? I don't believe so. I don't believe that there would be a dispensation between the catching up and the time of the Antichrist showing up. I think it's going to be fairly quick. Um, you know, in the ensuing chaos, I think it's going to be good for the Antichrist to come to power. Um, Messianic Jews agree that in this dispensation, salvation is by faith only. However, they have been commanded to, to God to keep his law forever. Messiah King will keep Torah all his life too. Gentiles know. Um, well, if read the book of uh, Galatians. They, aren't, they can't really keep the commandments perfectly. They can pretend that they do, but it's kind of an issue. Um, is KJV Life and the Spirit Study Bible okay to use? I don't know if I've ever seen that one, so I can't really answer your question. Sorry about that. Um, question off topic. We were talking yesterday about Charles Spurgeon. Was he ever involved in Catholicism? Because it is not quite clear to us with what is sometimes written about it. Like, would like your opinion. Uh, I don't know about Charles Spurgeon. I know he was starting to promote the um, American Standard Version. I think if I remember correctly, towards the end, or maybe it was the Revised Version. It would have been the Revised Version. Excuse me of Westcott and Hort. I think he was starting to kind of lean that way towards the end of his life and uh, didn't last real long after that. So that is kind of giving into some of the Catholicism stuff. Um, but I know that there's some stuff, you know, it shows him with his hand inside his shirt, like the Freemasons do, you know, they put their hand in kind of posing like that. So I don't know. Um, question Romans two, five, through six, lost, hardness, heart. Then in Hebrews 3, 8, 3, 15, and Hebrews 4, 7, it warns, save Jews not to harden their hearts. Another proof that you can lose your salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, I would say so. Absolutely. Um, they hardened their hearts back in the Old Testament. So, good point. Question, I've had, I have two really bad sins, one of which you have, had experience with i'm very convicted over it but haven't overcome it will you please pray for me my victory over them i'm so ashamed yeah pray for you um question any good history books to support the bible study uh hmm. that's a good question i can't answer that one right out front i don't have my books here yet um just a little update our our big ambulance, our big, you know, it's a super duty big truck and it can haul a lot of weight in it and whatever else. And it's enclosed. So I don't have to worry about my books blowing or 
around or whatever else. Um, we're, we thought we were going to get it back, and then the garage said no. They had to, the rear brake caliber froze up, uh, and when I went to move it, I wasn't aware that it was, it was locked up, and it shattered the brake pads. So they had to get the a new caliber for the rear passenger side, and then the pads, they didn't realize that they were shattered until they took everything apart. So it's, you know, not exactly, you know, easy parts to get. So that's, uh, should be done tomorrow. Hopefully then I can finally get my books here and then I can say history books. Okay. All right. Over here, whatever. They're miles away right now. So a good question. Sorry. I can't answer it. Question. Will the lake of fire be present in the millennium? I remember David Hoffman in the comments Bible saying it will be in the land of Edom. Eh, eh, I don't know about that. I would have to disagree with that. Um, I think I don't believe so because I believe the lake of fire comes after the great white throne judgment. Um, I think it's hell up until the great white throne judgment, Revelation chapter 20. Um, you know, I, I don't, the land of Edom, that, I think that's kind of stupid because the earth is burned up at the end of the millennial kingdom. So I don't know. I, I don't think you can prove that. Since God has wings and feathers, why would he not create his angels uh, with the same in the spiritual realm? Psalm 91, four, verse 4. Um, well, okay, just a challenge then for you. Please show me one verse of scripture that has angels and wings together. They never are in the same place. How can I convince a Pentecostal that uh, Acts 2.38 is not the plan for salvation? By comparing it with what's written in the book of Romans. Um, is godly sorrow repentance or does godly sorrow lead to repentance? Um, the exact wording here. For God, godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. Godly sorrow comes before repentance. Okay. You're sorry to God and, and you're sorry for who you are. And it's not just turning from unbelief to belief. You, know, you under, understand you're a sinner and your sins are against God. Okay. So. Um, trying to get down through here. Question in Romans 11, 13 through 25 makes it sound like conditional salvation, but it is, was it actually calling us to examine ourselves kind of like you will know a tree, tree by its fruit. Just need some uh, clarity. Um, Romans I'm trying to think. I, I know where it's at. It's talking about the Jews and, and things in Israel. Um, get down to verse 25. Yeah, it's it's just talking about God dealing with the nation of Israel. And you know, I've struggled with that verse before, but it's it's basically there's different ways of looking at it and whatever else. It it does not mean you can lose your salvation. That contradicts other scriptures. I've apologized for that in the past. It, you know, I I'll say it again in case you know it's not been clear enough. I was wrong in my study I did many years ago. People still bring it up, even though I deleted the sermon and and you know, I was wrong. But it's still brought up. Uh, it, you're not losing your salvation there. It's you can look at it different ways. God's blessing removed from a nation. Um, the Lord's kind of changing dispensational stuff. There's different ways to look at it. Um, no, it's not about somebody losing their salvation. Um, definitely not conditional salvation. So. Okay, question. What is your advice for keeping money safe, paying bills like required um, required ones, I guess you're saying? Do you still um, use electronic banking? When my mom's uh, house sells, we plan on purchasing a small RV, Lord willing. Um, <clears throat> that That's a tricky question because the the money system um, in America, the the currency is fake and they're just printing and printing and printing. It's going to it's just continuing to devalue the currency. So having stacks of cash is a bad idea. 
Um, buying gold and silver, bad idea. The market's being manipulated. They're not going to let it go up. You know, all these gold and silver bugs, these, you know, economist types and whatever else, they're just buy gold and silver. Gold and silver is okay. Um, it is biblical money, but the market's already being manipulated. They're going to do it in the future. Um, you know, if you're going to buy a big purchase, then I would say, yes, you have, you should have it in the bank because you try to go in, you buy, you know, you have a big, huge bag full of cash to buy a property. Most people will not accept that anymore. Um, I did that actually. We bought our first property when we came here to Maine. I had, I had it all in, you know, thousands of dollars that we had saved up because we would sell things and we'd get the cash for it. And it was just, everybody was just freaking out, you know, oh, we're going to have to fill out special papers for this and things. If you can buy an RV fairly cheap and whatever else, and, and you know, I would have a few thousand dollars in cash, but having a bank account is, is just kind of necessary nowadays. I mean, are there other ways to do it? Maybe. Um, I know a brethren that, that, uh, you know, get away from banking and they just do all cash transactions and stuff. Just something you have to weigh out. Um, and, you, you know, to just say this too, as far as uh, wealth, wealth is, is assets, physical assets. So um, don't have a lot of money in the bank. After you get your RV and you're, you're getting away from things and whatever, don't have a lot of money in the bank. Um, buy good things, flashlights, things that will keep, you know, uh, food, like uh, dried goods like beans, dried beans, uh, pasta, rice. Stuff like that that has no shelf life. Don't go for spam or something, you know, mystery meat <laughs> um, or MREs or things. There's, that stuff is garbage. Okay. You don't want to rely on that for good health when things are good. And you definitely don't want to rely on it when things go bad in this country. Uh, it's not good for you. So um, good question. Have you heard about the quantum dot tattoo? Do you believe that will be the mark of the beast? Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of different uh, technologies and things out there. That could become the mark of the beast. Um, uh, yeah, it, it could be. Okay. Trying to see, did I miss any along here? Um, Question, can one be saved, born again, return to Satanism, hating God, and still be saved with Jesus in heaven? Um, well, you're not going to be doing so good if you return to Satanism or something like that. Um, if you're genuinely born again, the Lord's going to keep you away from stuff like that. I mean, if you'd really, really rebel and get over into some kind of satanic stuff, whatever, the uh, Lord's going to take you out pretty quickly. Um Question, what verses should I use when evangel evangelizing to Muslims? Well, um, keep it about sin. You know, you get into the debate over Jesus is God and, and they say Allah had no son. And, that you know, that would, are you a sinner? Does Muhammad provide some way to have your sins forgiven? Always remember, it has to be about sin. They have to get rid of it. You have to get rid of their self-righteousness. Islam is just another form of self-righteousness. Catholicism is a form of self-righteousness. Mormonism, Jehovah's Witness, Hindu, whatever. It's all, you're a good person. You're not that bad. Keep it simple. Keep it about their sin. Um, question. Revelation 2.10 says, if you are faithful unto death, you get a crown of life. This also lines up with Matthew 10, 32-33. If refusing to deny Israel... Is refusing to deny God part of salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Um, and the seven churches in the book of Revelation, I believe, are actually seven churches in the time of Jacob's trouble. There is some application to us today, but you got to be careful because there's some things there that look more like somebody in the uh, time of Jacob's trouble. So. I'll see if there's any other questions. Okay, I already answered that question. Brother Brian, is the life 
in the Spirit's KJV Study Bible okay to use? Is the KJV text in that Study Bible accurate or misleading? Thanks. I don't know. I don't have one. So I can't answer your question. Am I saved because I believe in Jesus and his finished work on the cross? Uh, you're saved when, G when the Lord saves you. Okay. Um, you have to ask him to save you. And if you don't, if you're coming to him in a self-righteous state and just saying, well, I believe certain facts, but uh, I'm not really that bad of a person and whatever else, um, that's a problem. God has to do the saving and he will make it very clear when you get saved. You'll get a love for truth like you've never had before. Things will start to change. You'll start to see your friends turn against you, family turn against you. There's a lot of things that happen when God saves you. Okay. You save yourself by your own mental thought process up there you'll have to make changes happen okay but when god saves you genuinely you'll see which role do you think uh will germany play in the future time of jacob's trouble they'll be one of the 10 kingdoms i believe one of the 10 european kingdoms um Calvinism, Brian, not Catholicism. I'm not sure what I said. I, I misspoke something there. What they said. Um, yeah. You guys just say this, Brother Charles here. Take Brother Brian's advice. Get off grid as soon as possible. Even if it's halfway off grid, distance yourselves both physically and spiritually as much as you can. I, I read something uh, years ago. Some somebody was talking about being off grid and how amazing it is. They said when it's a rainy day, you're happy because you're getting you're collecting rainwater to use um, for washing things, or whatever. We don't drink rainwater, but I mean you can if you filter it. But um, when it rains, you win because you get rainwater rainwater catchment. When it's sunny, if you have some solar. And you don't need a huge big solar system, by the way. Um, you really don't. Um, if you keep your electrical needs down. But uh, when it's sunny, you make electricity. So when you're off grid, you win, no matter what the weather is. Pretty neat. And if you have a tiny house, you can heat it very easily with uh, with wood. I mean, there's there's wood stoves now that you can you can you don't even have to have split firewood. You can burn sticks and and pine cones and and whatever else. And it's pretty amazing. Um, get the chance, please check out my latest study I did with my dad in regards to the keys of Peter. I would be interested in hearing your thoughts at some point. Yeah, I'll see if I can check that out. Thanks for letting me know. Um, What do you think of the fact that we are already seeing the mark of the beast coming with microdot tattoos that can be read digitally for vaccine or Elon Musk's Neuralink? Uh, well, they're they're anxious to make the whole system happen. Um, I really believe, honestly, that this whole thing, the coronavirus and all this other stuff, um, the the wealthy people. I've I've met wealthy people. I used to be an artist. I went to very big shows. I was in extremely big um, galleries and things. I was meeting people that it was just. You know, the fact that they even talked to me because I was an artist, you know, I remember this one gallery I was in and the gallery owner was in Bethesda, Maryland, right near Washington, D.C. And the, the owner of the gallery, she was talking to me and things about my work. And, and she was just, you know, very, very brutal with what she was saying. I mean, this this piece here is beautiful. This one is terrible. I don't even know why you brought that, <laughs> you know, and, and I was you know having a conversation with her and. Uh, she, you know, walked off. She wanted a few of my pieces for her art gallery. And I mean, she had stuff in there that was, you know, tens of thousands of dollars for some of the paintings and artwork and whatnot. And I remember that one of the employees came up to me afterwards and, and she was just, I can't believe she talked to you for that long. Oh, 
wow, you should be so honored that this, this high up woman in society actually respected you. And I thought, huh? You know, and I, so I've been around the minds of the ultra wealthy and the elite people um, from the art world, not from ministry. I, I, I scare them away now. But, uh, you know, they don't like normal people. They look at people as cattle. They look at people as just insects, as bugs, as useless eaters, like Hitler used to say. And they want to cause massive death. They want to take land from people and take houses and take this and take that. They want to build their empires. And there's just too many people standing in the way of them doing it. So that's why they want massive death. That's why they want massive, you know, killing and war and whatever else. So you see these people like Elon Musk, he's one of them. And, you know, he's just, these guys are just drooling for the chance to get their, their implantable microchip out there and their, their, all this other stuff and all their AI technology type of stuff. Um, that's why they're that way. Uh, we're not going to be seeing it because the Antichrist has to be there. We get called out before the Antichrist can show up. So, but it is interesting to see how these people are just so anxious for it. You know, I, I remember years ago, I used to think to myself that, you know, the Antichrist Mark of the Beast system, it'll show up and it's just going to, everybody's going to say, oh, wow, look at this. It just showed up and that nobody's going to know about it. Well, I was very ignorant years ago. Uh, no, there are people that know about the Mark of the Beast system, that know about this coming new world order and they want it. They're dreaming of it. So that's why we're seeing some of the stuff but it's not going to be implemented until we're gone. Um, question, will the tree of life be in heaven? If so, will the garden of Eden be recreated up there? Well, in um, later part of the book of revelation, yes, the tree of life is there. Um, garden of Eden recreated. I can't prove that from scripture. Interesting theory, but um, question off topic. What do you do for homeschooling? Would you be able to do a video on this? Should we go along with curriculums and what? and whatnot we don't do any curriculum or anything i mean our son is just he's still you know he's gonna be turning six years old here in a, in a week or two whatever it is two weeks i guess and um right now we're just teaching him uh he can already count up to about one through 30 and he's he's able to write words and recognize words and things he actually when he was really really litty, little he learned the word kawasaki <laughs> crazy I had a t-shirt, a black t-shirt that had green letters, Kawasaki across the front. And I would wear the shirt and we would talk about Kawasaki motorcycles. And we had a Kawasaki four-wheeler at the time. And and uh, and he would say Kawasaki. And I, and I could actually take the word and write it out, Kawasaki, on a piece of paper, not looking like the actual shirt. And he would say Kawasaki when he was just really little, like three years old. And uh, so he, he, there's some real talents there and we're trying to kind of, you know, we're not going to force a curriculum on him. We're going to try and look, okay, what does he excel at? What does he need help with? Let's get him up in the places where he's excelling and the other stuff he struggles with. Let's work on that slowly, but let's build his confidence up by helping him with where he's really good. And then the other stuff will kind of work on that as we can. Question. Jesus said, keep my commandments. If you love me, I now give you a new commandment that you love one another as you love yourself. Can you please clarify that for, for me? Question. Um, it just simply means if you can take care of yourself um, and whatever, well, you should try to take care of other people. Um, is what that's saying, essentially. Love your neighbor as, your, as yourself. Is Yahweh a name for God? I hear controversy over this saying its origin is pagan. Yeah, I'm not really into the whole Yahweh thing. Yeshua is fine. Uh, obviously, Jehovah is good. But uh, that's something I haven't, I can't really do the real in-depth study in that. Um, Ruckman did a, a, he has a little booklet out, Bible Baptist Bookstore, the You Who Yahweh Scam, I think is what it's called. Might have done a video on that. I'm not sure. Um So, oops, just went there. What is the difference between philosophy and sound wisdom? Um, sound wisdom comes from God. It's based on scripture. Philosophy is man's wisdom. Okay.
Huh, didn't know that. We are seeing Antifa bring out guillotines in the streets already. Just saw a video from last night with one. That's interesting. Did not hear about that. Uh, First Corinthians 11.4 says it is a shame to have long hair. My wife says my long beard is still long hair, and God says it's a shame. Really? Uh, okay, a, a woman's long hair is given her for a covering. It's a glory to her. Um, can she grow a long beard? I don't think so. A uh, beard is a difference between a man and a woman. So there's no problem with uh, having a long beard. Sorry, that's nonsense. Um, Ryan, did you ever go to Cornerstone Baptist? It's in Denver or Ephra, PA. Are you got a friend that's going there? Um, I knew a bunch of people from Cornerstone Baptist Church right down near, near uh, Speedwell Forge. Um, it, it's in Lidditz is where the one was. I don't know. It might even be renamed by now. I, I have no idea. The pastor, Arnold Killinger, left, um, had some problems and whatever, marriage busted up and stuff. So all Baptist churches come to an end. Comment, read Leviticus 23, 35. In fact, the whole chapter of Leviticus 23 in context and notice what God says about wearing face masks and who was instructed to wear them. I'll check that out. Uh, I'm not going to go there right now, but yeah, I'll check that out. I'd like to do something about this face mask thing as it's really ticking me off. It's just false science. I'm going to be doing a video one of you put in the comments about on my the, the uh, GP update video thing um what do you put in the thing about this evangelical agreement that they're saying you should all get together and take you know this vaccine and stuff which is nonsense the guy who promotes it is a works at the nih with fauci and uh he's a rock rock and roll you know medical doctor and a whole bunch of other stuff yale graduate and he's a theistic evolutionist <laughs> total lost devil Question, what can I do for family members who are under Trump's spell and seriously worship the man and country? <laughs> uh, just just show him his lie, the, the lies of Trump, you know, that the, this is the best economy ever. No, it's not. We're losing, you know, for 21 weeks, I think, or 20 weeks, uh, there were 1 million jobs that were lost in America. Um, then it went to just under, you know, a million, 900 some thousand, and now it's back up over a million again. So 21 weeks of people of a million people filing jobless claims. That's not a good economy. Trump is lying. And it's not, well, then you're for Joe Biden. No, I'm not for any politician. They're all crooks. It's it's challenging though. It's yeah. I have people that I know that and I say, you know, Trump is Jesuit educated, and that usually doesn't go anywhere either. Um personally. Uh, which pope do you believe will be the Antichrist, the white pope or black pope? Do you think either are the last pope before Antichrist? Um, I would say that they're basically the, the pope, the Antichrist, when he shows up, is just going to come in and they're going to give him all authority. And uh, brother and I were talking about this one time and he said maybe that the Antichrist, when he shows up, he'll come in and actually execute Pope Francis because he's such a waste. <laughs> I don't know. And certainly we get the uh, pre-Vatican II Catholics excited, which I'm going to be doing more stuff on that in the future, too. I've got some good information on them. Um, what kind of water do you gather to drink? Well, there's a, a spring that runs most of the year. And we go get that. Um, we have some springs on our own land. I, I need to get in there and fix them up and whatever else. Um you know, not fix them, but I need to, to tap into them and things. Side hill seep. You got to dig out and then put a little pipe and you got to, you know, do the whole thing. I just haven't had time to do that. We're just so busy. But uh, we can do that. We can do rainwater catchment as well, which we do a lot of that as, you know, that's an easy way to do it. You can filter it and it tastes just fine. Um, Brother Brian, Stephen Anderson is deeply involved in the P-NES 
movement. Okay, I guess are you trying to, uh, I don't know if you're trying to be dirty there or not or whatever else. I've never heard of that. Um, probably you're just being an idiot. I don't know. I've never heard of that. So if it's real, okay, sorry. But if you're just being a, a foul idiot, well, then the Lord rebuke you. Um, question, how can we identify people who teach easy believism? Um, because they'll say that repentance is turning from unbelief to belief. And they won't take a big attitude against, you know, sin. And they won't say anything about a changed life. So. Uh, all right. Um, question. Brian, what music should I switch to or listen to? Um. Rock and other stuff are bad anyhow. Um, well, there's uh, more of a traditional bluegrass is good. That's fine. Um, symphony orchestra type of stuff is fine. Old hymns, obviously. Um, you're supposed to speak to yourself in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Um, so hymns are between you and the Lord. You're supposed to sing that. Um, but listening to good hymns, old hymns, the old rugged cross um, at Calvary. You know, uh, you know, there's a bunch of old ones. Amazing Grace, that's a real popular one. Oh, those are good to listen to. Um, All right, trying to get down through everything. Um, do you do communion? How often? Um, we do rarely, but you know, occasionally, maybe once a year, something like that. I know a lot of Baptist churches did it as a weekly thing, Sunday nights, just to see who the faithful were. Um, Um, I'm trying to see here. Am I missing anything? Have you seen the New World Order song that China and the UK released? No, I haven't. Um, I haven't. Um, in regards to face masks, I posted a petition on your website there for people to sign. That's good. We, go. we all need to do what we can um, on that. How come Brian is still here when Sanderson 1611 is gone? He's not. What do you mean? Uh, do the research. He's not going from YouTube. What are you talking about? Lee Baptist, Sanderson 1611's right back up again. What are you, what are you talking about? Um, question, what do you think about all Saturday and Sunday debate, which day we need to worship God and not work? Um, one day a week uh, is you should rest. Um, so, you know, the, the, the church in the New Testament um is supposed to be flexible you don't have to worship every single week i mean we're doing it now because it's just fine it works out for people most people have off on a sunday 10 to 12 is a good time we go a little bit over that's fine too um you can come and go as you please here whatever um so question do you see this world going another five years without the rapture um not the world as we knew it that world's already gone um, it's something I struggle with, to be very frank, because it's just, you know, if I was a single guy, I wouldn't even care. I would just say, okay, I'll just, you know, probably live here and, and just make video after video and just do Bible studies. 
but I have a wife and a son to think about and I've let a lot of things go um, that I need to prepare and need to get done and whatever else. So if we're going to be here for another five years or something, or however long, um, life is going to be quite a bit different. I think even a year from now, life is going to be very different. Uh, what essential tools would you prioritize off grid? Um, hmm. Well, that depends. It depends on where you're living. Um, it depends on a lot of things. Uh, you know, lighting is very important. Um, some way to have water stored up is very important. A way to, uh, if you if you have access to good water, you don't need water filtration. If you if you collect rainwater, something like a Berkey filter, a gravity fed filter, they're very good. Uh, don't put bleach in your water to purify it. You're just poisoning yourself. Um, warm clothing, very important. Um, so, question, what's your position about the cross as a symbol for Christians? Uh, you don't need it. We don't really, there's nothing in scripture that says we have to have a symbol. Uh, I think if somebody has a cross or whatever else, that's fine. Um, so, yeah. Uh, question, have you heard of Joseph Gregory Hallett? Worth researching. No, I have not heard of him. Um, I grew up as a Christian, was in a bad car accident, and started questioning my faith. I spent years away, but am back in my faith. Uh, was my name removed from the book of life during that time? Well, if it's your faith, if it's your mental consent, then you were never really born again. Um, you need to, you know, God has to save you, and he'll change your life when he does. So, you know, just, uh, you know, make sure that you're saved. That's the most important thing. Um, does not Ray Comfort do a good job with evangelizing and giving the gospel? He does, after all, preach repentance of sins. What are your thoughts on him in regards to the gospel and salvation doctrine? Ray Comfort's issue is he does not believe in absolute truth. He does not believe that this book is perfect. So when he sees false converts, he has to make it about lordship salvation. And, um, well, you have to be sinless in order to be saved. Well, if you're sinning, then you're not really saved and, and whatever else. And he means all sins. Okay. He's not just saying, I think your, your profession is false here or whatever. He has no absolute standard by which to judge people. The Bible to him is just another book. Okay, you can call it God's word, but in, you know somebody comes and says Hebrew and Greek. And oh yeah, well it's it's you know no translation can be inspired and stuff. So, um, and yeah, Ray Comfort uses NIV. Ray Comfort uses anything. I knew a street preacher years ago that that talked to Ray Comfort about the Bible version issue, and he just said, "I'm not interested. I don't want to talk about it." So that's a problem. Uh, do you know of Jason Cooley? Yes. Did a video about him years ago. Old Pets Baptist Church uh, online. Yeah. Take some good stands, but it's Post River. <laughs> he got mad at me because I said that Post Rivers have a false god. And he called me an idiot and all kinds of stuff. So, um, yeah. All right. Okay. Well. I think that's probably going to be it for today then. We're at 1233. Um, got to check with the government and, uh, uh, you know, make sure that I'm allowed to shut the church down now. Make sure everybody temperature checks. Let's all come out one at a time. You know, why would anybody be going to a church building anymore? I mean, it's just crazy. Um, so, yeah. Um, so that's going to be it. There's a few more people with questions and statements and whatever else, but we've, we've gone through this thing pretty far. Um, remember the study. 
don't let people confuse you on the issue of eternal security. If you're born again, if God saved you, you have eternal security. Book of Hebrews is not written to you. If you get into Hebrews and try to make it line up with the Pauline epistles, it will mess you up badly. Um, you know, that's just the way it is. You, you know, again, there are, part of my ministry has always been to expose false teachings and false teachers. And, uh, you know, I get sarcastic and whatever else, but it's it's understand biblical sarcasm. God uses sarcasm. God mocks when their fear comes in the book of Proverbs chapter one. Understand that. Understand that in my heart, my worst enemy, Stephen Anderson, the black pope, whoever, uh, if they came and they, they met with me in person and said, um, Ryan, I really honestly am broken here. I want to get saved. I would stay up all night talking with them. I don't hate anybody. Okay, understand that. But when I when I get sarcastic, when I'm when I say things nasty or whatever else, I'm attacking that error, that truth, and the person preaching it. I attack them just to say, to turn people away from that and and say, hey, you know, that person's false. Don't listen to them. And these non dispensationalists that are coming out, they tick me off um, and saying salvation has always been by faith alone. That's non dispensationalism. And they say well, that this is classic dispensationalism. No, it isn't. I will attack. I will be very harsh. But in my heart, I love that person if they would come in a repentant state. All right. Um, but one of my jobs has always been to expose false teachings and false movements. That's what this was all about today. This study that we did here. Um, and take heed to what I've said. Uh, I'm not as old as some of my viewers. Um, but I'm 45. I've, I've earned my gray hair, you know, getting more and more of it up in here and things. Um, I've been around. I've seen some things. And you young people out there, take heed to what I say. And you start to watch some guy, and he seems pretty good. And he says, you know, I believe salvation's always been the same. It's always been by, by faith alone. And we always have eternal security. Please take my advice and just run away from him. Don't just say, well, I know Brother Brian warned about this, but I'll just hear what else he has to say. You're being pulled in to a false prophet's ministry. They come along and they say, this is just a translation. It's not really inspired. It's not perfect. Run away from them. Okay, if somebody says, we're going to go through the, the time of Jacob's trouble, run away from them. Trust me, right? I've dealt with these people for years, many years. All right? So... That's going to be it, and uh, pray everybody out there has a good week, and we'll keep praying uh, for everybody. Pray for us, and uh, we'll see you next week, Lord willing. So, see everybody later. Thank you again out there to everybody for your support, for your prayers. See you next week.